is up guys welcome back to my channel today I was feeling like filming and I figured let's do fun makeup I'm feeling a little glamorous today and uh, I'm gonna take some pictures afterwards because for a limited time only glamour shots by Deb are 75% off I already get my hair cut at the cotton corral now just imagine you're weightless surrounded by tiny little seahorses that was one that's gonna come out really nice so I figured why not do a look a full glam look however if you watch my channel a lot you would know that full glam looks a little bit different for me now I absolutely love videos and pictures where girls go full glam they are beautiful to look at they are gorgeous to look at but they are not realistic for me as I feel like a crazy psycho weirdo if I do my makeup super full glam. So today I am going to show you guys what full glam looks like to me, a more natural version of full glam. So if you're somebody who maybe doesn't do quite the large display of makeup or you're looking how to zhuzh up your look a little bit more, this might be the video for you. Let's put on some glam. Let's go. So I went ahead and prepped my face already. I used the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer and then also I went ahead with that Dior Backstage uh, Glow Primer, which I just, you know, love. And so it already looks like I kind of have like a lovely, nice glow happening. When I do a more full glam look, I definitely want to make sure I have a smoothing primer. So as always, I'm probably going to make this a more dewy, glowy glam. So just jumping right into it, I'm going to go straight in with corrector. I'm using my tried and true Charlotte Tilbury corrector and I'm just going to take a little bit of a dense uh, brush and sort of just barely tap in the areas where I want to conceal the most. Holy smokes, where are my YouTube skills? You guys need to be up close. Better. All right, so now I start the concealing process. Very, very thin, thin layer so that it does not look super cakey and I still have the uh, appearance of an airbrushed look. And also that my natural skin up close looks more flawless than it really is. Do a little bit of spot concealing. All right, now we do foundation. So my skin is a little bit more dry lately than normal and I'm going to go in with a little bit of my IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Plus skincare but today I'm gonna pop in another foundation to mix it with and that's this Shiseido synchro skin self refreshing foundation the only thing about this one is the shade that I got I just didn't do a very good job matching uh, so these two are quite different and since I'm getting a little bit paler not going outside as much these two together will give me a fairly good shade match so I'm gonna go in and do some stippling mainly concentrating on the center of my face first and then blending outward. The idea is not that I want to look like a pancake. I really want it to look a little bit more um, flawless and effortless. But when doing full glam, I usually go for a more full coverage. I would say most people would probably say the same thing. In order to achieve that, I already went in with a phenomenal foundation brush, but now I'm going to go in with my Real Technique sponge. Take the last little bit that's left over and just go through and press everything into the skin that much more. Concealer time. Today I'm going in with Clinique's Even Better Concealer. So this one's more new and it comes with the little sponge tip applicator on the top. And I've been using this one off and on and I have to say I really, really enjoy it. Um, I concentrate most of the product right towards this corner of my eye. That's where most of my discoloration, um, thin skin underneath my eyes is. And then I will do areas that I kind of want to pull forward a little more on my face for when we get into contouring. And to give this even more extra glow, I'm going to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand and concentrate most of the pigment up here so that it'll give me a little bit more of that glow. Anywhere where I want the glow, I'm going to put it. All right, now that I look absolutely psycho, we are going to blend. Cue that cheesy montage.
Okay, here we are up close. This is kind of what we're working with. Can we see this glow? I mean, that glow wand is everything. It's one of my most loved products. I, I dig it so much. It looks wonderful. And I am already off to a really great start as far as my base goes. So let's go ahead and put some powder on and set everything. Eyes first, as always, because the more I'm talking and blinking and moving, the more the creases are starting to take shape underneath my eyes. And I don't care who you are. You get creases underneath your eyes unless you're getting like Botox or filler underneath them. And being full glam and getting that airbrush look means erasing as many lines as possible. I mean, who are we kidding? You want to erase the lines anyway. So I'm gonna use the Becca Hydra Mist Powder and I'm going to smooth it all out, not move my eye, and then go in with the powder and set it without the creases on there. Now, sometimes I get a great questions about powder. Um, a lot of people are like, why not use just the same powder? Well, if I am creating shade and light on my face and giving myself more grooves instead of looking like a flat pancake all the way across, I want to use different colors and different formulations for different areas of my face. It seems like a lot, but it makes more sense and it really makes an impact on how your makeup looks. So for instance, I use the Hydra Mist powder underneath my eyes because it's very thin and fine and hydrating and that's where I get a lot of dryness. For my face, I'm gonna go in with something that's a little bit more full coverage powder wise and that's gonna give me a little bit of color or luminosity for the whole rest of my face. And also, if I've got a lighter shade underneath my eyes and the rest of my face is more of my natural skin color, then I'm already creating without even using contour and bronzer angles and shapes across my face to make it look as full glam as I want it to. So this is my refillable Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powder. This stuff is instinct incredible and sometimes I use this even when I don't have like a liquid foundation on because this is actually a foundation powder. It's phenomenal. I use it even with dry skin. And this one just has a little bit of tint to it. So it gives me a little bit more coverage, which if I'm looking for a more full coverage look, this is the one that I would go for. And especially if you have oily skin, I would highly recommend trying this out because I have dry skin and I love it. All right, as if we don't have enough layers on our face already, we're gonna add in some more. Hey, you want some more? Some more what? I haven't had anything yet. So how can I have some more of nothing? Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. I'm gonna move in with a little bit of bronze and contour. One thing I really don't like about a full glam or the typical full glam look, how not human-like the contour or bronzer looks. A lot of times I see stuff that is just literal, like a one inch line right here. And yes, you do go in with the product in those exact areas, but I don't want such a clear cut <laughs> here's dark, here's light, here's light definition. I want it to be sort of a blurry blend. I don't like as much sharpness. So that's where the natural uh, full glam would come into play. So I'm gonna take my Soul Body or ColourPop Bronzing Balm in the shade Dark. I just can't get enough of this. I think this is the most incredible formula and value for what it is. And I always go on this very angled sponge because this top part gives me such a precise area to start. And I really think the key to getting the perfect look, I'm gonna keep saying it again, light layers. So going in with really light layers, putting it exactly where you want it to be, and then building it up to the color you want is so much easier than getting a ton of product all at once and then trying to go back and fix that. That's 10 times harder. So this I'm using kind of like as a contour, if you will. Typically a contour shade would be more of a gray to purple tone in t inside of it just because it's supposed to be like a shadow. For me, I don't want it to be quite so harsh. This just looks a little bit more natural but still is giving me the chisel in my cheeks that I'm going for. So you can already kind of see, maybe so redundant in this video, but you can already kind of see where these in-depth cheekbones are happening. And all I've done is apply 
just a little bit of a darker pigment. If you are contouring, you're definitely going to want to put a little bit on your forehead depending how large it is. If you have a smaller forehead, skip it all together or just do a light layer right on the hair. If you have a larger forehead, contour that baby down a little bit in a more natural way. For me, I just feel like it really softens the whole face. So right now it looks like I have a giant spotlight on my face. That is the idea of contouring. That's what's so cool about makeup. It is literally like art. You could make whatever you want. You can make yourself look like whatever you want. So making sure you're really easing yourself into it so it looks more like a shadow and less like a dark harsh line by doing this it looks like i have a much more chiseled out jawline and i can even create the illusion that i don't have a double chin because i do also going down the sides of your neck right here i put a little bit underneath my lip and blend it out this gives a shadow underneath your bottom lip to make it look fuller than it really is and then i don't do too crazy contouring on the nose. So I go in really sparingly across my nose. I don't like to get too crazy with it. So yes, this to me is the natural full glam contour look. Let's add in just a titch of bronzer. So I'm actually not using a bronzer. I'm using a CC brightening powder, which I've mentioned before. And this is by Terry. And this is the shade Sunny Flash. If there's one company I wish one day to be sponsored by, by Terry hit me up. So I take a little bit of this rose powder, which literally smells like roses. It's so fun to put on because it feels so luxurious. And it just is a light enough shade where it's not super crazy noticeable, but you see how it gives that glow? Oh, it's, it's, it's. If you want to view paradise, Simply look around and view it. And using a really fluffy brush sort of diffuses it out further to make it look a little bit more natural and less like a strip because the bronzing is really just to warm up the face. So definitely warmed up my face a whole lot more and gave me a small amount of glow. All right, let's get some eyebrows together stat. Wow, surprise, surprise. I'm gonna go in with the same products I always talk about. I've said it like a thousand times. This thing, you never know where it's been. <laughs> thousand malls. Was that a Christmas movie you just saw? Yes, it was, because I'm a Christmas fanatic. Get ready for November. Anyway, I go in with these two almost like ride or die products for me at this point. The Benefit Cabral and the Physician's Formula Brow Shaping Gel. This just works for me. I don't know. I feel like I'm the only person doing this. So I take my little baby brush and I chip away. I probably don't spend as much time on my eyebrows as a lot of people, um, especially for a full glam look, but I do just enough to make it look like I've actually done anything at all with them. <laughs> and mostly to keep them in place because these puppies are unruly. Do a little comb through to sort of smudge that out and not have quite so many harsh lines. And then I go in with that wonderful gel on the teeniest, tiniest of all brushes, which is what makes this phenomenal. And I just comb through. And it keeps everything in place without leaving a disgusting white cast that looks like glue later. All right, it's at this point that I'm gonna go in with my ever favorite Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme. That way, there's enough time to get these puppies plumped up before my final look. This stuff is amazing. Smells like an energy drink. I know I've said that before, but every time I smell it, it's like a five hour energy drink. <sighs> We're gonna get into eyes, which I feel like is the part people most think about when they think of full glam. So obviously my version of a full glam eye is not gonna be some crazy, huge, extravagant, talented makeup look. It's gonna be a little bit more toned down than that, which I feel like you already know. But my first step in really achieving that is to put on an eye primer. Um, I've mentioned this in a video before, but this is the KVD Shake Primer. Such an interesting product, such an interesting formula. I absolutely love this as a primer for concealer um, and then also for the eye because it comes out clear. So I don't have a base that has a color and I can get the true representation of any eyeshadow that I'm actually using, but also with an amazing staying power. I'm going to be using my new Lorac Marikai palette. It's just so 
stinking amazing. So the key to making a really good eye look, whether you're doing a soft glam or not, in my opinion, is blending. I feel like almost everyone's gonna tell you. Blend, 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 blend. The more pigment you go in with and just pop it like this and then just jam it in your eyeball, the less blended out and less nice looking it's gonna be. Now I do do that a lot because I'm in a rush and I have children. Um, if you have time, especially if you're doing more full glam, I would definitely recommend blending everything out and using a swirling motion. Um, I do use a back and forth uh, from time to time as well, but in general, especially if you have mature or aging skin, doing, or a hooded eye actually, you uh, would want to do a little bit more of a circular motion because it's gonna deposit more product up this way, um, but in a more diffused look. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using, obviously, but we're gonna do another cheesy montage as I always do. So uh, let's go. this is really the tip top of how dark I'm willing to go and I even feel like I've been punched in the face a little bit but I know it will all come together at the end so I'm not panicking right now. Um, I, I am going to go in with this, this eye and show you kind of what I added there at the last second that you guys didn't see because I was looking down. <laughs> And now we're gonna clean up these areas and blend all the colors in together and sort of melt it into one nice little radiation. To do that, I'm going to use a little bit of this tone and a little bit of this tone and a little bit of this tone. <laughs> Okay, I've sort of blended it out to where I want it to be, and now I'm gonna go in with the sparkles. <laughs> I have so much stinking sparkle product that it was really hard for me to pick which one to do today, but because glam usually means let's have a little fun, I'm going to add in first a base layer of sparkles. This is going to be from Linda Halberg's Interstellar Liquid Shadow. This stuff is just so really, really interesting. I take a little bit on my finger, and I'm going to put a little bit across the lid here. This stuff adds so much sparkle but is like the thinnest of all thin formulas. It almost feels like nothing or like water and it really blends out. So sparkle wise that's kind of where we're at. There's a lot of just really like light loose sparkles but I still have the depth and darkness of the shadow. So to pop open my eye just a little bit I'm going to use the Pat McGrath Promalux Highlight Creams. I actually have an entire video just on these. I love them so much and this one is in this sort of like bluish purple tone but it's really really pale. So I'm just going to add it right on the center to sort of brighten up my eye area right here only. So now I have quite a bit of range of colors of sparkles and I'm ready to do eyeliner. To give this just a little bit of color and interest, I'm gonna take my Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette and use this really, really interesting fun purple shade right here. And I'm gonna make this into my liner before I put on a liquid liner. It seems like a lot of steps, because it is, but it really gives you just that extra little punch of color that makes things interesting. So I'm gonna take a really, really tiny brush and go in and make a line. Now I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury The Feline Flick Liner. This is my absolute favorite to create a really tiny line. I know a lot of people love those really heavy, thick lines. It just ain't for me. Um, so I'm still gonna do a wing, but it's just gonna be so small. So this is one way to do a liner for a full glam look, but you could definitely do more of a smoky, smudged out look. If that's something that's of interest, please let me know. I will definitely do that too because I love that look as well. Let's add in a titch of blush before I do my lashes. So this is Buxom's Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush. So it's gonna give you a lot more staying power and has a slight bit of luminosity inside of it. Just do a really nice light layer of it. And then I'm gonna go in with Patrick Ta's blush, but I'm going to use the cream side right here. 
and just go in really lightly. And it just gives me a little bit more dew and also cream and powder together sometimes gives it a little bit more of a stick. Okay, almost always with a full glam look, you will see somebody do big lashes. So typically on my everyday life, I will not use lashes. I dabble in individuals or clusters, which is what I'm gonna show you today. If I'm going to do a full glam look, especially one that's a little more natural, these are the things I would use. So to prep my eyelashes for for those, I'm going to use a little bit of Ico Black Magic Mascara, just a really, really light layer of it. And then I'm going to use the Kiss Falscara Collection. So there is three different types of the Falscara lashes, but I only prefer these lifting lashes. And that's because the lifting lashes you place underneath your lashes and not on top. It literally lifts your eye open and creates them to look a little bit more open and awake. I usually only use about three and I just do the edges. But what I do first is I take one side of this, which is the bonding side, add it a little bit right here on the lashes is kind of like the sticky glue that holds it all together. Then I take one of the little lash clusters and I put a little bit of that same glue on it. And then I'll place it underneath the lash line. Go in with another one. Got my second one on. So I'm gonna go ahead and add three to this side and then the last one on this side and we will reconvene. Ready? Let's work some magic. And voila. So after the eye area, I feel like the next thing that really makes something full glam would definitely be highlight. So I'm not gonna do a big giant strip across my cheek, but it is gonna be something that's a little more impactful than I would normally do to do some glam. I'm going to take my Rare Beauty Luminizer in Mesmerize. And if you watched my last video, you already know that I use this with a brush. I do not use my fingers for it. I don't prefer it that way. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of luminosity across my cheeks before I go in and sort of detail my highlight. So I'm gonna add a little bit to my hand, pick up some of that product, and really just swirl it in a nice glowy motion. What's a glowy motion? I don't know. Okay, so just to intensify this even more, I'm gonna go in with an old favorite by NARS. This is hot sand and it is everything and more. I can't seem to find this alone like I have it, but I think that you can get it in a quad. So I'll try and link that when I link all the products down below. So I'm gonna go in with a nice little tiny tapered fluffy brush and I'm just gonna do this hard part of my cheek so it looks like I'm glistening in the sun, just ever so slightly just right there to make the biggest impact. And of course, I'll take a little bit just right there on the tip of my nose and just a tiny bit on the tip. And then I love to take my finger and kind of do the inner corner so that it sort of brightens up that area. And even sometimes I'll go underneath my eyebrow, but today I am not going to do that. It's super, super extra glowy and dewy. I realize that you do not have to do this much glow and dew. It's just my jam and it's what I like the most, but it's not for everybody. All right, to finish everything up, I'm gonna use my essential lip pencil. My lips have gotten a little bit fuller after that Too Faced plumping gloss. And then I'm gonna go in with my Velvet Blur lipstick from ColourPop in the shade Oasis. Just one swipe is plenty. And I'm gonna top it off with my new favorite formula ever, these Maybelline Lifter Glosses. And this one is in the shade Moon. Now I'm going to spray it all up with the Clarins Fix Makeup Setting Spray and Hydrating Spray at the same time. I don't know. So yeah, this is my full glam look, but a natural way. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will link everything down below in the description box that I can find. Let me know if there were any tips or products that you absolutely loved from this video. I super love to hear that kind of stuff. Definitely don't forget to hit the notification bell before you leave. I would appreciate that and I would appreciate even more you hitting the subscribe button. Definitely give this video a like if you like glam but also a little bit more natural. And for sure, go follow me over on Instagram and like to know so you can shop any of these looks that I do right in the picture right there. Check out the community tab on my page. I love your guys' answers for polls. They crack me up sometimes. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next video. 
Bye.